Dudes, welcome back to another YCS uh, Richmond duel, right? Um, so, quick recap, last duel uh, we saw Phantom Knight PK um, versus Labroom. So yeah, if you haven't checked that match out, go check it out. Pretty interesting duel. Now, um, in the very ma next match, we have Pac versus, um, I don't know, Scott. <laughs> Scott, Scott Cawthon over here. Um, no, it's not actually Scott, but Scott Cawthon. And Pac is going to be playing a real interesting deck. You already know what it is because it will probably be in the thumbnail and in the title. It does go down to time. I know time sucks. Even with 45 minutes, you know, sometimes time rules really does like interfere with the competitive integrity of a match. And it can be frustrating, not just as a spectator, but a player as well. It's really frustrating for like time to be such a factor. And you're going to see Pac do some of his combos so fast just so that time does not become a big issue that it, it gets kind of annoying. Okay, so we're we're doing Sinful Spools Infernoble versus Tier Limits. And Infernoble, I have not had much faith in it. Don't don't get me wrong. I love playing Ignites. I love um, Fire Warriors and the whole Infernoble deck. I love what what they've done with the place, but I I just have have not had much faith with the deck myself. But me personally, I'm very stingy with how I play um, Infernoble. I I feel like if I'm not playing Ignites, I don't want to play it. <laughs> I only want to play the deck if I'm using Ignites. So that's kind of my little crutch with playing Infernoble. But um, Pack over here, I'm sure he's he's had the most play tested, optimized build that we've seen yet, and um, it's going to be real, real interesting to see this thing in action. Um, our boy Scott here, if you watch my Tournament Testina video, you'll know that he's um, opening Mothman or pretty much any Danger Monster plus Reinhardt guarantees you a uh, totally awesome because it means you can go into Mud Dragon and then from Mud Dragon plus Reinhardt you can get Bahamut. Um, and Bahama here, we see a Veiler in Pac's hand, right? Stopping the Toad, which not only stops the negate, but also stops the Toad add back of a, of a water monster. Now we're gonna see Scott here open Perlerino. Perlerino's gonna get him probably Sheeran. That looks like Sheeran, just from that little white part of the artwork. It looks like Sheeran, no, Shiren. I hear some people say Shiren, and I'm just like, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like that's what, what it should be called. It might be called that. It just, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right to say it like that. All right, so we see Shiren drop Kelbeck mill three. Um, tch, mills a Havnis, okay. And I believe he milled Murley for the Reinhardt effect, so Havnis will still have his effect. Uh, Kelbeck will get a mill, and that's Suliak, I believe, because Suliak searches... I don't, I don't know what Suliak searches, but I know it searches a, another tier card, so um, he's getting a search, a fusion, and a mill all at once. So that looks like he's searching tier cash. So Saliak searches the monsters, unless that's not Saliak, unless that's like crime. I I can't tell the fucking difference by 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 that little part of the artwork. Now we're gonna mill five with the Kelbeck. Um, so we milled a statue, the Strudo, and a Guido. Oh my god, is it gonna keep going? I didn't see what Pack milled. Uh, Pack milled DDR, Durandal, Imperm, and Wanted poster. <laughs> Definitely not cards you want to mill. Milling that many equips before you actually start your turn might actually hinder your ability to play around things with like a Isold, so that's actually like kind of bad for pack. And then we're gonna get a Guido to mill five more. So Scott's gonna go into Dragosopelia, and then we get five more Heritage, Angelic Ring, Gear Freed. And something tells me that Pack is not on Infernoble Arms Joy Use. So I don't think he'll be able to recycle that gear freed unless he gets it back with Renaud or with like Mogus. I, I believe Mogus is how it's pronounced. Uh, so we see Scott here mills Scream, Car Destruction. I think he milled another Nib. He's grabbing another Soliac there because Scream adds Soliac from deck to hand when it's sent to grave. So far, there's only one known interruption, I believe. I guess Soliac would be two. We're gonna see him go for tier cash here. And it's like milling ten, then going into tier cash to mill another like two or three cards. I think it's three. Mill Reinhardt, mill Murley. He's already resolved both those effects this turn, so I think those are duds in, in in graveyard at the moment. So I don't believe he can activate either effect, unless I'm mistaken, because he discarded a uh, Reinhardt from for Mothman. So now I'm going to link off with the Bahamut Shark and the 
tier cache. Go into SP Little Knight. Okay. You know, SP Little Knight, it was actually in like 100% of the deck list that made it to top 32. And it's like, I think like last weekend, because there were a few regionals and stuff going on last weekend, more people played SP Little Knight than Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring. Like SP Little Knight is that popular. And we're going to see why during this duel, because it won't just be on Scott's side making SP Little Knight as like a final interruption, but also pack, you're going to see him go through multiple SP Little Knights and it may seem redundant, but it actually is the best link that we've gotten ever. Like, no doubt about it. It is like DPE on steroids, you know? Um, it is, it, it power creeps every nightmare link because it, it banishes any card and it just does way too much. So now he's gonna use one of his shufflers. He's gonna put his, I think two of his statues back into deck. And, ah, okay, so I think he's going to, hold on. He used a shuffler, shuffled a tier cache, I think, back in the deck, and because he shuffled a tier cache, he's gonna use Perlerino to pop something, pop his own Shiren, and then, because Shiren was popped, he gets to summon Kaleida Heart, and then Kaleida Heart shuffled something back to deck, shuffled a field spell or something. I think that's how that went. All right, so we see um, Pack activate Museum, and Museum's gonna get All Mace. All Mace is like a bridge. I don't think you you should be playing All Mace unless you're playing multiple Noble Arms, and I don't think Pack has Joy Use in his list. Like may, maybe maybe that's just like me not thinking he'd be on Joy Use, but I, I just don't see him playing Joy Use. All right, he has QCR Rota, QCR All Mace. He activates All Mace on the SP Little Knight. Um, trying to bait out its effect. And then he's going to use All Mace to add back his uh, Durandal, or to uh, equip his Durandal to the uh, SP Little Knight. Then he's going to use Durandal's effect. He's trying to bait out um, the SP Little Knight here, but uh, SP Little Knight has not budged. Um, so now he gets to search level 5 lower Fire Warrior from deck to hand. Uh, he's asking to read Heritage. Heritage won't do much because, uh, engraved, because a monster with a Noble Arms equipped spell has to be destroyed by battle. It can't just be like a, when a Noble Arms is destroyed by battle. Or I think a Noble Knight monster equipped with a Noble Arms is destroyed by battle. That's when it gets to um, add back. So there you are with his QCR Rota. He gets to add I'm what I'm assuming it's going to be Connector. No, he adds a Renaud here. Okay. And I believe that's a CR Renaud. I, I believe he's just completely flexing um, that, that YouTube money Max Verity Infernoble deck. I could only get like half of this, maybe. I have like a museum and a QCR, like um, QCR Angelica. That's about it. So he's going to normal the Magus. Um, nothing happens yet, so I don't believe he can use SP Little Knight here. Because SP Little Knight has to be in response to an activation. He's gonna go straight into battle phase and swing over SP. I don't think he has a response for that, right? Um, which is fine. It's not like he, he has one less interruption on field, you know? Um, or it, it, it's not like uh, it, it changes the number of interruptions he has on field because he still has the um, Celiac, he still has um, Dragostopelia, he still has a bunch of stuff that he can use. So he's milling the meta noise. Alright, so Pack here is gonna make Angelica. Uh, Angelica's gonna be chaining one. Magus is gonna be chaining two. I believe. I know Magus has like some weird um, timing 
like like Magus can miss timing if it's like sensitive graveyard like incorrectly. So it's 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 weird sometimes because the card can actually come in clutch recycling some of your stuff, uh, especially since you know him recycling some of his noble arms will allow his museum to be even more alive. And uh, he's gonna get a draw, and then he's gonna get to search a second museum. Which, because museum is not hard once per turn, he'll be able to, to resolve all effects of museum um, on it, you know? Like, for both copies. <laughs> and a museum has, like, two different effects. And the only catch is that you're locked into warriors if you use the second effect of uh, museum preemptively, but that's not even that big of a deal, because... Now that SP Little Knights of Warrior, we actually have good interruptions that we can end on that aren't just Emperor Charles. So he's going to equip the Magus. Uh, and he's not going to use Angelica's effect to banish itself. He's just going to go straight into summoning it with Museum's effect. And now he's going to get Museum pay another 1200. Search another Durandal. But he's already used Durandal's effect this turn. This is why I'm, I think that he's not on, on Joy Use, which I've come to find that in the Infernoble Knight build, Joy Use is pretty good because recycling some of your graveyard resources is kind of essential to not just extending, but to uh, recovery as well. So that's just my personal thing. So he gets to activate Durandal again, but he doesn't get to use any of its effects, which is great because now it can be used as bait for um, Angelica's effect, but he's gonna crime on the Angelica effect. It's gonna get shuffled back, and now Pack is kind of just left with this sort of awkward situation where I don't think he has the only thing he has left in hand is Oliver. And it looks like he has another museum. I think he's opened three of them. Or, I think he opened two and then searched one with, uh, Angelica. That's kind of crazy. So he dropped the Durandal that he searched. He's gonna go straight into SP Little Knight. Which is kind of crazy, because I thought he was cooking going into Amor um not Amirage, uh Relinquish Anima and then going into SP Little Knight. I think that would have worked better. I actually I actually I, I don't know why he didn't do that, unless Anima didn't work there. The monster's original level has to be one, but. Oh, okay, yeah, just loop SP Little Knight, <laughs> just go SP Little Knight into SP Little Knight. Um, yeah. And this is why some people like playing, or some people think to SP Man uh, Little Knight is like mandatory. Um, so, because he can use SP to dodge the uh, Drago Sepelia effect. Basically, he, he can force Drago, Drago Sepelia to get banished and then um, basically clear his board, but Pack kind of ran out of resources there, so um, now he summoned... What what card is that? I think that's the Muradora. Yeah, that, that looks like Muradora. The, like, the quality of this stream is like in terms of like being able to see what card it is, it, sometimes it, it's, it's a little tough. Um, but yeah, like Pack, it was a pretty solid turn. Like he got through a lot of interruptions, but it, it was not enough to close out anything. Like he couldn't leave anything significant on field other than SP, which is again, why I'm a little confused as to why he didn't go for like Anima. Unless, because it looked like he discarded to summon out Oliver, 
so Oliver should have been level 1, so I don't see why he couldn't have gone into Anima Swallow. But maybe there was something... Some other condition... Oh, because of Museum! He's locked into summoning Warriors. That's why. Okay. Now, now that makes sense. Okay. Um... So I don't think Pack is winning this game one, because one card left in hand, Tournament Player, um, seems like he has a lot of steam left. It, uh, was, he, he just shuffled back his, um, one of his tier monsters using, uh, this, the statue. And so he popped his own Sullyak, and then Sullyak searched tier cash. And I believe... He summoned Destrudel when Murdor was on board, so now Destrudel's level 3, Tear Cash is level 7, and that's how you make uh, Baron consistently. You just have to make sure that Destrudel's level 3. And I think this is game from here. If he summons a Baron, this is game. Like, there, there's no... Oh, and Tear Cash gets, gets his Mills, so Mill Scream, Mill... Uh, malicious. So he gets another Sullyak. He uses Valor onto Destrudo. Does that manipulate its level? It might. Otherwise, what's the point, right? Uh, so Banish Trivi Karma here. He's gonna get to search another Perlerino. Get uh, Add another tier name to his hand. And this is why there's a saying that goes like, um... The graveyard is to, is is tournament player's actual hand or like the second hand because most of their resources, most of where they play from, is going to be from the graveyard. Abyss Dweller does so much against tier element, you know. Um, if your deck can make Abyss Dweller, definitely go for it. If your deck, um, there there's even an argument for playing Gravekeeper's Inscription against tier. Um, there's an argument for playing a, you know, a lot of stuff that just, you know stops him from being able to utilize the full effects of their graveyard. I yeah, okay, so because Pack um used Valor on the Destrudo, he was not allowed to make a Baron, but he's still dark for the SP Little Knight. And I believe like because SP Little Knight is on his opponent's field, if it banishes itself with, with its own effect, it will still banish it will still return to its current controller's field, so it will not return to Pax field despite it being Pax SP Little Knight on end phase. And this is still game one. This is still game one, you know, uh, this... I'm surprised Pack is still playing. Um, there's... It's already been 20 minutes into the round, and I know it's like... You want to fight the good fight, you want to play the game until you can't play anymore, but, like, he just has way too much resources. He still has Perlerino, he has the Sully set. Um, he has a scream, so if you summon anything, he mills some more, and it's possible because he he I think he shuffled back all his tier names into deck that um, he's gonna get more good mills for like tier limit names if off of a uh, scream. Um, okay, so he's gonna drag Sopelia the Ricardo. I believe he has to have a target, so you just kind of tell him who, who the target is. Or maybe he can use Dragus Apelia for some reason. Okay, so uh, he's going to SP Little Knight instead, um, and then banish itself and SP Little Knight. And SP Little Knight should return to Scott's field. I believe that's how that works. Which is why Dark uh, Snatch SP Little Knight is so significant. Pack has two QCR SP Little Knights, dude. This is insane. Like, looking at his graveyard, there's like five cards I can see that are QCR. At least. Maybe six. <laughs> I don't think I'm counting it correctly. Um, and I think he scoops here. Okay. So, a 20 minute long game one. I... I, I think, like, he could have scooped a little earlier. Um, his starting hand was not that good. Also, this guy's wearing a, 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 star, set, a star set shirt, so props to him. Good ass band. Um, if you guys like, uh, I, I guess it's like alternative metal. Star set is, is, is a good band. 
uh, to listen to. Um, so yeah, Scott Cawthon over here. I know he's not actually Scott Cawthon, but um, takes game one with his tier elements deck. So now they're siding, and there's only 20 minutes left in round, like 22 minutes, which back going first, like Infernoble is really like negate heavy going first. Like they will, they create like a four or five negate board going first. So um, with like double Emperor Charles, uh, possibly Baron, and then, uh, you know, now SP Little Knight, even if they're locked into Warrior, they can still make both Baron and SP Little Knight. So maybe Infernoble, what, what could have been a... Um, a heavy restriction for them before is now kind of working to their advantage by getting to go into SP Little Knight, you know? And I think, like, before um, Age of Overlord, um, Infernova was very telegraphed because you had to go for either Angelica or um, or Isolde first. Now that you can make an SP Little Knight first, especially going second, it allows you to sort of, like, interact with your opponent um, before you actually start your really your the combos that start building up your resources and it, it kind of makes Infernoble a little more uh, versatile now um, it's not just losing to to an imperm anymore and now it's like you can kind of play around things better and sort of like force your opponent to like interact with you or, or to like know the matchup as to when to interact with what you're doing because if they don't interact correctly then they lose you know um, so we see back here, he starts out with Fenrir. I don't think, did, did he search another Fenrir from deck to hand? I don't. He did not, no. He, he just went straight into um, Normal Summon Connector. We saw the Wanted poster in his hand, so we're going to see some Dia Bellstar stuff. Um, here we go, he summons out the Ultimate Rare. <laughs> um, goddamn uh, Aqua Dolphin. And Aqua Dolphin is going to get to see his opponent's hand. By, by discarding one. Let's see what he discards. Is he going to discard the Nib or the Veiler? I think the Nib. Oh, maybe discard the second copy of Fenrir, actually. That's really smart. I always think, like, just keep that second Fenrir in hand, but, you know, I could definitely understand why he, he would want to discard it. And he's going to activate Wanted Poster. I'm really surprised, though, like, he did not try to check his opponent's hand for Joel and Lockbird. Um, before going into searching, because that would have just... He would have had no answer to that. That was very risky. I don't know why he didn't discard first before checking for Joel and Lockbird. Um, I know it's a tournament player, and they don't usually play hand traps, but he, I would be extra careful about that. <laughs> um, but because that first game takes so long, I'm sure that like he wants this game to go by quickly. So you're gonna see how fast like Pack starts playing to make sure that this game goes by pretty quickly. Um, so he summoned up the Easold Easold effect on summon. He's gonna search Magus just for extra, you know, extra recursion uh, next turn, and then he's going to mill four for I believe Ogier, and he's gonna mill a a a a Angelica's ring. gonna go for Ogier. Ogier's probably gonna mill Turpin. Yep. Okay. Uh, now how does he convert this into Angelica? So he's gonna banish the two Neospace monsters, get back the Phoenix Blade. And I believe now he goes... Oh, no Simple Spoils? Okay. Um, he's gonna go for Turpin first here. And he knows what the opponent has in hand. He knows he doesn't have Nib, so now he can just play like crazy. Uh, now he goes for the Bell Star. He sends the, um... I forgot you could send cards on field for, for Dia Bell Star. That's actually really good. So, Dia Bell Star, like, for Rescue Ace, it's mostly like a starter engine. I think when you're using it to extend, sometimes you may not have those cards on field to send for like uh, the simple spoil spell or for Dia Bellstar summon. But in a deck like Infernoble where you can constantly put up uh, cards as like equips and you can have like a lot of cards that like were previously kind of like duds on field. Now with Dia Bellstar, you get extra value out of sending those cards to the graveyard because now you're not losing cards out of hand to play the Dia Bellstar engine. So it is kind of brilliant, you know, like he just, 
um, summoned that Turpin and then uh, sent that Turpin. Um, and now I guess to summon Ricardetto to summon a Turpin back out, go into Angelica, Angelica Search um, Museum. So Pack is gaming. This is like, again, like as I said, game one, this is probably the most optimized um, Sinful Spoils Infernoble build that you're gonna see, like, ever. You know, like he was able to make an Apo, uh, Dempsey, Angelica, he's able to do all this stuff turn one. Because he opened Connector plus a way into Diabell Star. So that's a, it's actually kind of nutty. So he's going to draw a card. So now he's going to go Durandal here. Onto Dempsey. Uh, Durandal, send, search for... Oliver. And I don't think I've ever featured Infernoble on the channel, and n you can probably see why. Like, there is so much um, variance as, when it comes to Infernoble. Like, combo decks are so hard to feature because you, when I make my videos, I always want to show, like, everything that's possible. So, when I look at a deck like Infernoble, and I'm just like, holy shit, there's way too many options <laughs> as to what you can do. I think now I can show some of what Pack is doing, you know? Like, at least in in this feature match, we can see, like, some of what his uh, playtesting has gotten him to uh, in terms of, like, ratios and, um, and like, plays going first. Um, Connector is still an amazing card, because even if you don't discard something, you still get to see their hand. Um, and the fact that you get to see the opponent's hand before you start playing is insane. The only other deck that can do that, I think, is like Deep Sea, and nobody plays Deep Sea right now, so Infernoble is a great way to do that. Uh, he he accidentally summons the Link 1 here when he should have been Synchro Summoning the regular Charles, but it's not that big of a deal because he can just, you know, he can go into the Emperor anyway. And look at how fast he's playing, like, he's done all this in like the span of like... Okay, maybe he's not that fast. He's done all this in the span of like 7 to 8 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like, this feels like... If, if you were, like, watching this, or watching someone play this turn, um... At, like, Locals or something, this feels like this could have been, like, a, easily, like, a 15-minute turn if, like, the person, like, took too long to, like, decide about what they were doing. Like, Pack is... Pack is, like... He's snappy, bro. Like, he, he's just... He knows what he's doing, and he's no... He knows, like, what to do beforehand. And now he has... I believe, like, three negates on Apple, because I think he used, like, a, a Link 2 plus two monsters to summon it. Um, he has three spell, three speller trap, and, well, one, Angelic, Angelic Ring negates the first spell, Emperor Charles both each negate one speller trap, and that's, like, at least six interruptions there. Maybe seven. I, I wasn't paying attention as to how many materials he used on Apple. I, I looked away for a second. <laughs> And that shit was just slapped on the field. So Pack got gets game two. So now we're gonna see a game three with only how many minutes left in round? So it takes him about a minute to side and shuffle. So with eleven minutes left in round, we're gonna get to see our game three. Looks like uh, Scott's going first, so he's gonna set one, and then he, he's gonna resolve a Danger Nessie here. Um, he's gonna shuffle the or roll the dice, and he hit Nib, which is kind of crazy. Like yeah, that, that's one of the cards. I'm like, man, maybe you shouldn't have used that Nessie. <laughs> And it was like a one out of four chance to hit that nip, so I definitely understand it was like, fuck it. Um, but if he would have kept that set in hand, maybe, maybe it would have been a better chance for him, you know, to keep that Nibiru in hand, but that set seemed very important to him. So, let's see what else he's cooking. Uh, so he's going to go for Instant Fusion here, make it Instant Mud Dragon. And it 
doesn't look like Pack opened any hand traps, so this will be a completely interactive game. And it's not like tier elements make like a like a two or three negate board going first. It's good like you just have to know how to interact with the opponent. Uh, okay, so we're gonna see Con uh, Scott here summon out Scatter Shot, which is definitely a side in card. Uh, go for a Link to which is Sprine because Scatter Shot's level two. Um, and yeah, Scattershot's a mandatory effect, so the opponent has to do Scattershot Chain Link 1 and then Sprine because it's optional, Chain Link 2. Uh, so Sprine's gonna mill Murley. And the reason why that's significant is because that opens Sprine up to getting hit w with an Ash compared to, you know, if, if it was Chain Link 1. So it is significant if you have a mandatory effect. Uh, so now he gets to go for Garura because, you know, Nessie and uh, Murley are both Dark Aquas. And he's trying to link off this Brind. I don't believe he can link Sprind off the turn it's summoned. Um, so he has to use a Mud Dragon here if he wants to go for that play. And he goes into SP Little Knight. He draws a card off Garura. And it looks like a pass turn, yeah. Sometimes Steel Mints is like that. Okay, DD Crow, six card. Kind of funny. So we see him with Wanted Poster, Museum, Durandal, Ricardo, Mogus, and DD Crow. Uh, he's going to start with Durandal on SP to, to, to try to bait it out. Uh, like, ultimately, I think that's. Like, you can bait it out and start your combo in, in the same move. And, like, if. SP preemptively sends itself, then he just has a museum to search another Durandal, and because Durandal hasn't activated his effect yet, he'll just be able to activate another one and start his turn, but yeah, he gets a Durandal search. Oh, what the fuck? Hey, I don't give a fuck about the live duel, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It should just, like, automatically update it to, like, the live duel. Uh... Like okay, enough. We were already past that. I don't know why I just did that. Like I did not touch anything. Okay. This is around where we were. Alright, so Durandal, search Ogier, activate museum. Alright, so summon Ogier. And now he's going to SP Little Knight on the Ogier summon. Ogier still gets to mill either a Fire Warrior or Noble Arms from Deck to Grave. It looks like he's aiming to shoot that Turpin to Graveyard. Turpin's a great, a great extender in Grave, and... I guess Scott thought by getting rid of the normal summon he can get rid of the entire turn, but because we opened Wanted Poster here, that will not be the case. Uh, so Wanda Poster will get the Bell Star. So, we just need to set up a resource. Or I don't know if he if he's willing to discard a card from hand. I think he might want to discard the Mogus. Or the Ricardo. Because Ricardo could banish itself some of the Mogus. Okay, so he's gonna drop Margus, summon out uh, Diabell Star, and then uh, Diabell Star on summons going to set Wanted Poster, which is not the one that you should be setting. He should have set the original Simple Spoils. I do believe that that's big misplay, but you know it's like you see him looking at the card, he's like, "Oh shit!" You know, <laughs> it's just like, "Damn, I goofed." Which is understandable, you know, it's like, third game three, five minutes left on a clock, and they're not even looking at the clock, I don't think, I don't think they know how much time they have left, or they, they might not know. Um, so now he's just swinging for damage, right? Um, Scott over here, he... He did the Volcanic Scatter Shot and made the opponent take 500, but now 
he gets to swing with his own stuff. Hit over the Sprind, hit with the Magus. Uh, does the museum make the Fire Warriors gain attack? I think it does? I don't remember. Like, I'm like 80% sure museum has like an attack manipulation effect. I don't remember. Uh, I also don't know where my museum is. I gotta look for it later. But... Yeah, anyway. Um, we bring back the Turpin by banishing Ricardo. Wait. He's summoned Turpin from... Oh, okay, so he banished Ricardo to summon out the Magus earlier. That's that's what he did. And then he equipped um, Turpin with Magus, and then he, he used uh, Museum to summon out the Turpin. Um, but now he's locked into Warrior. So he will be locked into Warrior for the rest of the turn. He's going to overlay for King Dempsey. And I believe, like, um, he would have activated uh, Original Simple Spoils earlier on in the turn and just gotten himself into... Uh, Ricardo's first effect to go into something like Angelica, but now he's kind of like dealing with like the situation. It's like, okay, well now I kind of goofed with um, setting the wrong simple spells card, so now I have to sort of like do an alternative route. Um, so he, he's going into Dempsey, Dempsey, um, he's just detaching to, to get the material engrave, and then now he's going to go for Renaud. Uh, so now he's going to go for Durandal. And it's like, it's really just to activate Turpin's second, uh, second uh, graveyard effect, where if you control an equip spell, you can uh, summon it back from the graveyard. So now he's going to Angelica. Angelica is going to be able to search another museum. And you can see the life points on screen now. Pack is at 63, Scott's at 39. He can afford to pay another 1,200, as long as he doesn't leave too many weak monsters on his field. Um, Tyramid player only has one set and one card in hand. Um, he doesn't have a lot of resources in Grave. He didn't really mill going first. All he had was like the danger stuff. So um, he goes into SB Little Knight here, using the Dempsey and the Diabell Star. Um, Magus here will also be able to shuffle all three back, which, uh, yeah, will also allow him to draw a card. It looks like he drew another museum. So it looks like he will be able to go to extend for a... For a good amount of time. Now you see there's only two minutes left in round, and it's like time kind of sucks because there there are some games where it's like you, you know when you're at work and like you have like you have like only like an hour left on shift, but you've already finished everything and there's like nothing left to do. But you're kind of just like finding something to do. That's what watching like competitive Yu-Gi-Oh feels like sometimes, where it's like you know it's like okay, well. At least not in Pac's case, I don't think he's doing this, but, like, you, you notice, like, uh, when, when people are, like, slow playing in, like, the, the last few minutes of, of, like, the round, it's, like, they're not actually trying to get to something, they're just finding something that they can activate to sort of justify spending more time with playing the game. And it's, like, everyone knows that people do it, it's definitely not, like, the kind of Yu-Gi-Oh that you want to see. At least Pac, I can at least understand that he's trying to set up, like, more interruptions so that he does not lose to like the most random shit um in time um so now he's gonna activate all mace does he play multiple all mace no no, no. The, the, his 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 all mace was qcr I, I was just i was just trying to make sure i was like wait there's no way this dude plays multiple all mace um also just noticed that his apple is also shiny like a qcr but there's no qcr apple which means that's a starlight which means that's like a thousand dollar um Appaloosa that he has in his extra deck. Uh, just wanted to point that out, and that's definitely a 
collector's wear on um, Immortal Phoenix Gearfried that he's um adding back to his hand, and that's probably a CR uh, he sold on field. And the fact that he did all that during his turn and still hasn't gone into Isold shows the improvement that Infernoble has gotten with the Simple Spoils stuff, which originally I was not a believer, but now that I've come to understand Simple Spoils a little better, um, I understand that it's not just a starter engine, it is also a good extending engine, and you will see that when I upload my next video about um, a, a particular deck. Or maybe not my next video, but like when I start talking about, when I start doing more, like, getting started with videos, you, you, you'll start to see, like, how much Diabell Star, imp like, really increases the ceiling. And now he's going into another SP Little Knight. He already had an SP Little Knight on field. <laughs> he just had to get that extra resource um, in Grave and in hand. Right, so sending the All Mace to Grave without using its effect allowed him to add back the Gear Freed. And so looping SP Little Knight twice, like, being able to go into it again having another one in your extra deck allows him to not just uh, to not just have an extra interruption but to also potentially stop him from getting gamed if his opponent activates something and he wants to banish one of his own cards or one of their cards just to remove it for the battle phase um, so it looks like time is going to be called because the, the timer has gone down to zero um, And pack with this DD Crow in his hand. We're seeing Scott, Mill, and Agito. Uh, pack is gonna gear free negate the Agito, and I believe he's he's just scooping because um, he can't inflict, inflict damage in that phase. So yeah, uh, that was Infernal Knight Gaming, which like the deck has a lot of routes. And it's, it's really, really um, expansive and like intense what Infernoble can do when you're trying to um, play play through boards or to build boards and play around hand traps simultaneously because you, you, you could still just go summon Connector, summon Aqua Dolphin and just play from there. But I think like with the Diabell Star stuff, being able to access you uh, Ricardo at basically any point in your turn, that allows you to... Uh, sort of flex between like sp little knights and um you know more uh tech cards to like deal with some of your opponent's stuff and play through um and and just play better games com uh, compared to before so uh let me know what you guys think about infernoble in the comment section below this has been your boy nishiro signing out peace hopefully you know um i'll be uploading these assumingly the same day it's already like 4 p.m uh, I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to upload these on the same day as as I've recorded them, so um, I don't know who's going to win the tournament. We won't know till tomorrow, but uh, hopefully packed as well. It looks like he has a solid build, and uh, hopefully there, there are more games, more interesting games that I can commentate over. Until then, signing out.